Uh, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to day 22 of 55 Days of Christ Consciousness. So here we are again, um, connecting with this lovely energy that exists within you and how might these channelings create uh, that came through Amanda Ellis. This has all been inspired by her Christ Consciousness Self-Mastery deck illustrated by Jane Delaford Taylor. And it's really, really beautiful deck that can support you integrate your higher qualities and Christ consciousness energies that are within you and that are integrating into your body in your divine template. Ah, so what is for today? What is for today? It's one part of the is going to turn in Jesus. Oh, there we go. All right, uh, sacred sexuality, so beautiful, so beautiful in this time of divine union within yourself, because a lot of part of what this is, this integration is this divine unity also within yourself of your masculine and feminine energies coming into harmony in the sacredness that is you. Some people may refer to it as twin flame energy. Um, oftentimes people mistakenly equate that to a person. It's an energy. It's an energy that exists within you. And that is very sacred. Yes, can you draw forward a person that has twin flame energy where you very much are in harmony and work together? And it could be a sibling. It could be a parent. It could be a cousin. It could be a partner that you actually share life with and becomes also intimately um, in a sexual manner where it's a more romantic relationship. This the sacred sexuality is very much encompassed with that energy, but I don't want you to mistake it for just physical act of sex. This is about truly honoring the energy that you share and what is being ignited within you when you hold yourself as sacred, this sacred sexuality, not sacred sex, sacred sexuality, when you hold yourself as sacred and divine and those energetic centers of creation are ignited within you, rising up from the heart that magnetism from your heart it's very also lunarian energy as you come into relationships but also really right relationship with yourself and the divine union of god within you your christ light okay let's see what the card has to say but let's take it in a little bit more because look at these beautiful flames and that circle becomes one we often see like a um like the Vesica Pisces symbol, it's two rings. It's two rings, right? Coming around each other and uh, creates the Vesica Pisces. Let's see if I can do it with my hands, kind of, right? Anyway, two rings, one ring, there would be the other. So now these are coming to make the sphere. I don't have anything to write on in front of me. So otherwise I would show you, but your divine union is coming together into wholeness and back into one and then one sphere and everything comes out from that sphere of light. It's healing connection. Yeah, that divine connection within yourself. It is a very powerful healing energy. Absolutely. Absolutely, because the way you connect life into others, it goes lower, the unit of the lower chakras is completely purified. You're walking through this life with so with the love energy through everything you do. You're not being distracted by like the glitter of someone else, right? Because sometimes we can feel the light within someone, but they're not leading the life that's aligned with their heart and with the, the harmonics within themselves. And that can be very discordant. It could throw you off center. They're still perhaps codependent. This is about sovereignty. Sacred sexuality, you are sovereign. You don't need anything from anyone else. You are safe within yourself. 
you have the means to be resourceful, taken care of, excuse me. Yeah, there's that piece taken care of. Like that even means financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, you know how to do that for yourself. You know how to bring these resources together within you. Now that doesn't mean people don't care for you and they don't show you love when we need some, like if I say, if I'm recovering from an illness or something, I'm going to have people supporting me through that, right? But it doesn't mean I lack knowing how to do that for myself, right? We've, you've moved away from victim consciousness and you've healed your relationships um, patterns and recognizing ah, when they come up, you're, you're coming into your wholeness and your divinity and sovereignty and, and knowing that oh, wow, when I go into more romantic relationships and even friendships that can be very intimate, they're in a much different way. Your boundaries are far more clear. So you're going to have different people in your closer circle. And then you may have others that are more acquaintances and then some that you don't physically put energy into on a regular basis because it's not aligned um, in the harmonics of you and it will drain. They want to drain you unknowingly to be in your sovereignty and grounded state and inner knowing that that inner comfort and peace right we just had peace we just had the peace people may want to try to siphon your peace but you can still be peace and calm people just with your presence but because you're totally united inside yourself you don't try to fix anyone you don't allow people to try to fix you. Boundaries are very clear from both parties as you come together, unite together. Again, this is about also your inner unity. Um, maybe some of you are drawing forth a partner that has that similar twin flame energy that is balanced and harmonized within themselves. They're in their sacred sexuality. They're comfortable in their own skin. They're confident. Their ego is humbled. They're, they, there's a peacefulness. Both parties have doves. There's like a freedom in it. Look, I'm wearing lilac. There's freedom, that magenta and the pink. There's a lot of love and higher consciousness in the way they are, in the way you are. There's a beautiful flame that's just easily fanned. Look how beautiful that is. And they're in the waters. Again, these peaceful healing waters and the rays of light coming out right? It's almost as if they're, yeah, that divine union with your crown chakra, all of it, just you get the halo. You you have your halo of golden light that's radiating from your being. And your sacred sexuality is going to be felt by others. It's going to be felt by others. But let's see what the card has to say. And because um, people may begin to notice you, right? And just be drawn to your, your, your light as you come into your divinity more fully and your unity consciousness too. This is card number 50. And, um, but it's a lot in your lower chakras are definitely purified in that sense. You may feel as though sacred sexuality is something that has passed you by or has been lost, or is an unobtainable goal. And yet there's a rich teaching within this message. Whether you have experienced it or not, or already holding its vibration, or are in partnership or single, sacred sexuality is less a practice, although tantric techniques and philosophy are one of, of an, it's one avenue. And more a far wider unique path. And however you approach it, it is ultimately about depending or excuse me, it's, oh, I've read that as depending. Okay, you're moving away from codependent relationships. Let me make that clear. Okay, you're deepening your inner practice, your inner state. You're deepening the connection to yourself. That's what all those practices are about, but they've been distorted. Okay, some people have laid just the sexual content the sexual part of relationships within it. And, oh, let me move this energy around, but they haven't brought in the higher consciousness within those practices. Okay, so be mindful for those of you that do seek out tantric practices. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Be in the highest guidance and the partner that you were with 
hold them as so sacred and recognizing really the depth of the energies that you are igniting within yourself and then that you're also merging with. It's not something to um, take for granted and to be played with, I feel, in a place that's just, I just want to feel that ecstasy while physically connected to someone. While that is very beautiful and very powerful, it's beyond that physical act of sex. It's creation energy. It's unity and wholeness and oneness. It's that very deep connection within yourself. And when you are there and you hold yourself in a sacred sexuality and you are healing and in a deeper connection with yourself, I know from personal experience, myself and others, we do not enter into sexual relationships in the same way whatsoever. Whatsoever. In fact, the actual sexual act is the last thing on the on the on the mind. And I know from my own experience, I'm just speaking for me, when someone's approaching me in that and they're leading with that, I immediately am just like, no, nope, they're not where. I would like a partner to be right it's over sexualized it's not in harmonics it's not in the highest consciousness of vibrational state and that's totally fine where someone else is at i just did that life already and i'm not there anymore so i'll move on sacred sexuality is less of practice okay let's go on, okay okay philosophy or a more wider path okay however you approach it it is ultimately about deepening your connection to yourself another and god many belief systems have it have at their core the holy sanctity of sex some decreeing that sex only within marriage is acceptable however it is important to realize that jesus narrow words on these were written decades after his teaching and we're led by current thinking of the day and the writers themselves. So in that, that's implying and really bringing forward that we have, all of us have old imprints laid over in what, and interpretations that were laid upon us and belief systems that have to be unwound when it comes to the act of sex, right? Because we're also dealing with the divine feminine energy coming in, the harmony between the masculine and feminine energy inside you, but also in the within everybody, right? So that, that the patriarchal dominance that is currently occurring in the in the world right now is coming down. Um, meaning it's not, it's got to come into harmonics with the divine feminine. So we're seeing a lot of disruptive things. Me Too movement would be an example of that playing out. Um, okay, but it's not just women, it's men too. Okay, because their divine feminine energy is also rising within them, but also their patriarchal or not, excuse me, their masculine energy is also finding a new sense of balance within that. So, um, yeah, so that old way of men approaching women from a sexual, like, ugly and objectifying place and women going, oh, okay, that means something and, and like valuing that as they're looking at you in a, um, almost like that attention validates your your self-worth right all that's being healed as you as women and even men are coming into like that doesn't validate my self-worth i'm okay with who i am i know who i am i'm harmonic inside i'm loved inside i love myself i know what i need and don't i don't need to be sexualized by another human being man or woman period that energy is gone but you can look at each other through the eyes of the light and the God that's within you and recognize you are whole within yourself. And you, as two sovereign beings of light, you come together in unity, in partnership. But even if you're single, you're already coming in to your life in unity, in partnership with life and the light. And the rest will follow. And then you'll begin to even just like when people start to flirt so then from the beginning, I know from my experience, it's like, what are you doing? It's like, it just falls off. It doesn't even penetrate anymore because flirting can be fun and stuff. If I don't know you, 
And I can feel like for me with the sensory and the intuitive um, amplification, I can feel that very subtle energy and very overt energy that it's just like, no, I'm going to stay over here and give you less of my attention and energy. I'm not going to give it attention, right? Because that energy wants attention and then I keep doing it, thinking it's okay. It's almost like this cycle. It could be like a cycle of abuse potentially. So pay attention to that for yourself. If that's how you're moving into relationships, like, oh, but they're flirting. Oh, they're doing this. Oh, but I flirted with her and she responded back. Is it integrity? Is it have integrity? Is it really, or you're just over at over responding with just sexual energy that is not grounded in love, that is not grounded in the sacred sexuality of yourself? Is there still healing that needs to be done within you? Right? Are you using sex to um, build your relationships? Right? For attention. Right? Because sometimes that happens. It's abuse of power. And this is not a judgment on any of you that may use the like the sexual paralysis of, a, of your body or energy to get what you want. It's not a judgment, but is it an alignment? Is it of integrity? Is it transparent? Is it whole and sovereign in the purest way possible? Or do you need to heal something within yourself because you respond that way or act that way to gain attention and comfort and safety from others or love, a sense of love? Okay. It's very much also tied into the power of many. Lower chakras, tribe, safety, security, right? Resources, survival, fight, fight, freeze. Do you still have some healing that needs to be done in those areas? So pay attention because they can be so subtle, but we're also unwinding a collective belief system that women were once property, men owned them. The, the power dynamic was sex, right? I'm going to use sex as have power over you, right? We saw many women see that they're pressured to gain acceptance in the workforce. It still happens to this day. Okay, and there's other things men experience on their end as well. I can't necessarily speak to that because I haven't had the male experience because I'm a woman. So I digress kind of back on here, but it's important to talk about the polarity, the, the opposite of before you come into sacred union, the healing piece, what's within you that you need to heal, what, what energy, what imprint, what's in the storehouse of the sacral chakra and your solar plexus, maybe even the root needs to be healed within you as you foster that deeper connection with yourself and your iron presence. Indeed, any relationship Jesus had when alive as a, as a man is not the Gospels. But that is not to say he had the, the, to be celibate, because God created everything, including our ability to procreate, but also to receive pleasure. Indeed, when we look at, to, when we look at enforced celibacy as opposed to celibacy we choose, it can lead to unneeded hardship. In new earth consciousness, we are not forced to take such vows or abstinence if we do not want to. Back to Adam and Eve at the tree, women is, women is no longer cast out and condemned for her actions of temptation, but is instead recognized as the abundant God as she is. Now we are all invited back into Eden, where mutual respect, appreciation, balance, harmony, and love are the only prerequisites. That's a very beautiful thing. Yeah, we're seeing each other's for our beautiful qualities and the divine feminine and the feminine body. Earth, it's earth. Because you are, if you are an adult, a sexual being with a body that has needs, the question asks is whether these are met by a suitor with energy aligned to yours and seeking ultimate expression of love. Align to yours, seeking the ultimate expression of love. Okay, that's important. 
It may also be worth considering if you are a good partner, able to give as well as receive. And I think I kind of made reference to that in my own experiences, right? And talking about certain things. Mm -hmm. It may also be worth considering if you are a good partner, able to give as well as receive and be vulnerable while seeking deeper intimacy and mutual goals. If the energy between you is overtly influenced by mass media, marketing, and the entertainment industry, there may be a distorted expectation and disillusionment with our physical appearance via unrealistic airbrushed imagery or toxic material view. Very true. Sexual, sacred sexuality. Let me pause there for a second. There's something about that. You guys who follow me on here or are drawn to my videos, you notice I don't use filters. I just, I don't. I come raw. I'm in my t-shirt. My hair can be pulled up, pulled down. I can look tired. I have glasses on or I don't. Some days I may dress up a little bit nicer. I'm here to communicate to you in that my authenticity comes through for you, right? I'm real. This is who you're getting. We're in a time where AI has infiltrated every single thing. Now, it's not bad or good. You have to use discernment. But is it fostering, and we see it through the entertainment issue, when we are repeated images and images and images over and over again, what a man should be and look like, what a woman should be and look like, right down to what you wear, what you dress like, right? How thin you should be, what kind of hairstyle you should have, has nothing to do with who you are as a core being has nothing to do with your self-development or inner state of higher consciousness, right? But it can impact your inner state and ability and influence how you see yourself in relationships that become discordant and harm you, and harm you. It's You're getting programmed all the time. So how might you remember who you are within yourself, deepening your connection and I'm, and foster what is truly, truly important within your essence and core being. Now, that's not to say you don't can't enjoy nice things and fix yourself up and you want to look a certain way. I'm not saying that at all. That doesn't define who you are. Who are you at the core level? And are you doing that just for yourself? Or are you doing it to gain other, to fill you externally, right? Because attention makes you feel better versus knowing you are totally fine with who you are. And maybe you want to wear pajamas one day because you're going to relax. And then maybe you dress to the nine when you go out. Perfectly fine. Where are you in your heart and your being? Where's your partner in their heart and being? Right? Do they have some weird distorted expectation of how you should be? and what you should look like. You're not a piece of candy in someone else's arm. And that goes for both men and women, right? Use discernment or pay attention to what you're feeding yourself with. What, okay. I had a friend of mine, she posts often on Instagram and I did say, hey, Emma, use less filters. She's like, what? Emma, you don't look natural. It doesn't look like you. People want to really connect with you. And she's like, oh, and she actually started using less filters. Sacred sexuality is about being open to the far deeper emotional and spiritual aspects of embracing and enjoying an intimate life, an intimate life. Nowadays, the vast pace, the fast pace of life can be matched with the hunt for the quick gain, whether through one off encounters or relationships that don't get time to reveal what they can ultimately be, the rush toward being with someone because it is expected or you feel pressured by your peers can lead to a problem. Also, instead, like can lead to a problem also. Instead, like waiting for the sun to rise, some things are worth waiting for and some unions are destined. We oftentimes have outside pressure to take relationships to other levels. And 
I remember a dear friend of mine and we were very close and intimate never it was never sexual but there was so much outside pressure to define what our relationship was and isn't that it actually was a contributing factor in our dear friendship like falling apart because it brought in doubt it brought in question it brought in all these other things all these other people calling it something it wasn't or worried and putting all these other things in it that it just wasn't, just wasn't the reality. It interfered with our own conversations about what we were recognizing within our relationship and our closeness. And so there was just a lot of love and care, a lot of love and care. Similar to if those of you that watch Frankie and Grace, right? They're two women that have a lot of love and care and are very intimate with each other, but it's not even, it's not a sexual relationship, right? But people start to wonder. That just needs to stop. Stop wondering, let people be connected in intimate ways. Intimate relationships are not always sexual. You have intimate relationships all the time and probably don't even realize it. Letting go of old dogma, shame, guilt, apprehension, or feeling under, under, undesirable is necessary since your body is not something to be embarrassed or ashamed of. It may be that healing from the past abuse or dysfunctional and unwanted experiences may be needed. That's what we were talking about a little bit before. If required, enter the holy waters. Enter those holy waters See, you can begin a new, ready to welcome in new possibilities, experiences, vulnerability, sharing, and love, tenderness, open-heartedness, excitement, bliss, ecstasy, and new states of consciousness arriving, reminding you of the feeling of being alive. Yeah, your sacred sexuality. It's very much alive and creative energy. So... Be open to yourself. Be real with yourself. If there's more healing within you that needs to be done, then do it. Ask Jesus to help you. Ask Mary Magdalene to help you. Mother Mary. They'll all come in. Even Lady Nada. And it'll come. And it'll bring forth that divine healing within you so you can really, really embody your sacred sexuality, healing, and connection. And the healing that will occur with the partnerships that you draw toward yourself, the depth of those and the intimacy of those conversations and the space you give each other to figure out what's happening in yourself or themselves. And then you come back in this beautiful way of communicating. It is just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful and so powerful. So I'll leave you with this image of this beautiful sun which to me represents your union in the wholeness of your masculine and feminine energy in your Christ light and partnerships you draw forward. And remember, it's not just sexual partnerships. It's any intimate relationship with life. It's the intimate relationship with life. All right, have a really blessed day. Like and share this video. I'm Gina Libido, Soul Inspired Reflections. Much love to all of you.